Now, we've seen two-tier policing during the riots with top cops ignoring violence from Muslim mobs after sitting down with community leaders, while white British people get no such privilege. They just get dogs and bat on charges. Are we now seeing two-tier sentences in the courts? I think we can all agree that violence is reprehensible and should be punished with the full force of the law. But some of these sentences are for sharing memes on Facebook or shouting spicy things. We've seen children as young as, as 12 facing sentencing in adult courts and judges citing anti-establishment opinions. A judge even told people they'd be jailed for just observing a riot. And is due process being followed? Keir's 24-hour courts have been holding suspects without bail and rushing convictions and sentences through. Let's have a look at some of these sentences. 61-year-old David Spring was sentenced to 18 months in prison despite being a carer for his wife who has health problems. He pleaded guilty to violent disorder during a riot at Whitehall. According to the Sutton Guardian, Spring his role in the disorder was making threatening and hostile gestures towards police, shouting abuse at officers and joining in chants of who the F is Allah? Now, I fully support the state punishing people who commit violence, but shouting and making gestures at police falls far short of this. And a gay couple were jailed for more than two years each after they walked into the riots after a day at the bingo. The bingo! I thought these rioters were all far-right thugs. Are you telling me that EDL go to the bingo now? Two fat Nazis, 88. They told the court they had happened upon the riot by chance when they went out late in the evening to buy more alcohol. <laughs> I never, never get between a northern gay and the booze shop. According to the Teesside Gazette, former school governor Stephen Malan, 54, and his partner, Ryan Shears, 29, bit of an age gap, were captured dancing and gesticulating at a line of police officers as the crowd behind them roared on the evening of July the 31st. Malan shouted abuse at an officer. Dancing, gesticulating, shouting abuse. Can this get any more evil? The police hit them with batons and set their dogs on them. One of them was bitten the bum. I mean, that kind of sounds worse than gesticulating. I kind of feel that justice was already set Anyway, I'm joined tonight by entrepreneur and dating coach Kezia Noble and the comedian and famous international playboy Bruce Devlin. Now, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce is a Scotsman who enjoys the occasional tipple. Absolutely. You, you, I sort of feel like, you know, there but for the grace of God. That could have been us stumbling out of the bingo and into a riot by accident. Well, I mean, that is the thing. We do like a day out and things can go awry. I, yeah. um, I don't know if anyone had seen the footage, but. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but it's when the dog bites the guy on the bum. Yeah. Um, it just all seems a wee bit unnecessary. Yeah. The bum biting. It did feel that, uh, you know, in some of these cases, they'd already been dealt with quite uh, quite harshly. You know, being bitten by a dog, being hit by the police mm -hmm. uh, after, you know, fairly minor stuff. I mean, I know it's, it's part of a bigger violent disorder, but, uh, but I feel like, you know, giving them... 26 months in jail each on right. top of that is, is quite a lot. The reason why they're doing this is because the government want to silence the people in this country who have had enough of mass uncontrolled immigration. Europe want mass immigration. The West want it. Canada, Australia. And people are starting to speak out. And when they saw those votes coming in for the Reform Party, they got scared. Hmm. They got worried. And now they're doing everything to silence us. Yeah. That's what's happening here. They'll put, do forget dogs. That's just the first step. They will just. Are they going to move on to cows? No, they're they'll just immediately arrest people and sentence them at some point because they don't like what's happening. People are getting fed up with this. Uh, mass uncontrolled immigration. Well, I mean, this, this is your opinion. Obviously, there's, there are people out there who would say we need mass uncontrolled immigration because, uh, you know, for example, if, if you're a landlord, it pushes up rental or, prices. Or if you're, uh, or, if, or if you've got a business, then yes? uh, you can you can have uh, cheap workers for your business, and it destroys the the power of the the unions. Destroys well, our the quality of life is getting worse as a result. I don't care about GDP. Our quality of life is getting worse. I grew up in the 90s and 80s. There was no waiting lists for anything. 
you could get a parking space, you could get on the housing market, your child could get into the local school. The quality of life has deteriorated. When I ask people, what has mass immigration done for you? They really struggle. They say GDP. Of course, landlords, property developers have made a lot of money from it, but they are in the minority. The vast majority of people, their quality of life has eroded. Yeah. It has, well, as a result of... And we've seen that in some of the some of the towns that saw the rioting, like uh, like these northern towns, Rotherham, Rochdale, uh, you know, the places that have, you know, some of the, some of the awkward history with, uh, with immigration. Uh, they've actually seen uh, in the last 10, 20 years, they've seen unemployment and uh, people claiming inc incapacity benefit. The number of people claiming, the percentage of the population claiming is actually going up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people aren't, the economy's not thriving as a result of... But going back to the sentences for things like gesticulation, dancing, jeering and screaming or whatever you want to call it, we are told constantly that we have no room in prisons yeah. for proper offences, whether they be um, violence by virtue of murder or sexual offences or any of that. You know, there's cases in Scotland where people have been convicted of sexual crimes and they haven't even been given community service. Mm. So my point would be that it's kind of like, OK, I understand that they want to make their voice heard. We won't tolerate this and we won't do that. But are you going after low-hanging fruit? Well, and also they're clearing the prisons out of, uh, of people. There's a, there's a guy who's involved in a machete murder who only served six months in the end. And they let him out of jail early so they could make space for somebody who'd sent a fruity meme. And uh, well, yes, the bingo now. Yeah, well, well, back to these guys. I mean, at least these people were actually present at, at a riot. The, the bingo guys were actually at a riot. Other people have been jailed for sharing memes on social media. 51-year-old Lee Joseph Dunn was handed an immediate eight-week jail term for three Facebook posts showing such things as a group of men, Asian in appearance, at Egremont Cat Crab Fair in 2025. It was quite a niche, uh, specific place to be, with the caption, coming to a town near you. Now, I don't see what's wrong with this, apart from the fact that they're Muslim at a shellfish fair, so I think that's against their religion to, to eat shellfish. Uh, but the, the fact that, uh, you know, we're, we're having... Asian men coming to these towns is factually correct, with immigration soaring to new highs, thousands of men coming across the channel in small boats, and the government's Operation Scatter policy ensuring that these new arrivals are spread across the country. It's simply a matter of fact that you know this is likely to happen. The Muslim Council of Britain even point out that fully a third of population growth in the UK is Muslim. Uh, Muslims have more kids, and obviously there's high immigration from Muslim co countries coming to the UK. Britain's future is as a Muslim country. Obviously, I think this is, the, this is a good thing and very enriching because I don't want to go to jail. But we can't deny that it's happening. Another man was convicted for social media posts after a court was told they contained anti-establishment rhetoric. So we're not allowed to criticise the establishment now? And people on the left who spread misinformation haven't been prosecuted, such as Labour's Jess Phillips or Hope Not Hate, who spread inflammatory hoaxes about acid attacks on Muslim women by white men and, and 100 far-right protests. Jess has at least apologised. And let's take a look at some some other sentences for other people who engaged in sectarian violence. The Golders Green supermarket knife attacker avoided prison altogether. And Muslim men who drove through Jewish areas shouting rape threats, threatening to rape Jewish daughters, had their charges dropped. Now, Hope Not Hate's boss spread a dangerous rumour that could have incited violence, but they're not arrested. Is this, uh, is this more uh, evidence of, of a two-tier approach? The fact that you know, they're not arrested, but somebody who shares different memes, if, they're, if they've got a different political persuasion, uh, even if they're less inflammatory, does get arrested and does get sent to jail. Two-tier policing, two-tier reporting, two-tier sentencing, two-tier outrage. Mm. This goes on. Where, where are all these uh, stand against racism mob when it comes to Jews being attacked? Yeah. Why don't they care about them? Weirdly, it seems to be a fashionable racism amongst the, the sort of woke progressive types who are yeah, normally... Yeah, it's a trend. It's yeah. a trend, yeah. I know. I feel, yeah, it's, it's terrible. And it's just more evidence that there's this two-tier everything now. Yeah. You know? It's like the whole thing. It's like, you know, everyone's outraged about what's happening in Gaza, but... They're not outraged about what's happening in Sudan or Yemen or Syria. That's fine. Let's get outraged about this two-tier outrage, two-tier sentencing. This is a big problem. I think we're being, we're really getting split as a nation now. Yeah. And I, I don't put everything down to immigration. I don't, I, I believe that 
what you said at the beginning, like there are a lot of Muslim people coming over. I don't think it's just Muslim. I think they just want people from the third world, wherever it is. It might be India, which is not a Muslim country. They yeah. want people from the third world so that, that our expectations and our quality of life deteriorate. So we don't expect the same amount. Because if you bring the third world here, you have the third world sort of... Uh, expectations that they have. Well, is there an issue with... That's not in racism, by the way. That's like, that's not because the people are a certain colour. I don't... Uh, that's nothing to do with it. Yeah. It is from, well, no, from and a country obviously a lot, a lot of that people, does not have what we have. Yeah, and a lot of people come here and integrate. My uncle is Indian and, uh, you know, he, he came here and he's, he's one of the most patriotic, uh, proud to it's be to British. Race. This is know. nothing to do with race. This yeah, yeah, yeah. This is to do with race. This is to do with, this is to do with culture. Yeah, and I think this is exposing the sort of failure of multicultural I think you know Tony Blair had this dream that oh we can make Britain into this melting pot of people, uh, but in fact it perhaps would have been better managed. We would see less sectarian violence and less inter-ethnic conflict if people had been encouraged to be British and sign up to British values. I think Tony was against that, yet he was up for war crimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, was, he, was, he was a complex I, I, man. I think that's the thing that there doesn't seem to be consistency across the board. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd agree with that. And moving on, a judge in Belfast said that he'd lock people up even if they were just observing the riots. Never mind the right to protest. In Britain, you don't even have the right to observe a protest. We've got facial recognition, the internet being monitored and policed, and people being locked up for observing protests, arrestees subjected to public humiliation. You might be thinking, Keir is turning us into communist China, an unchallengeable autocratic regime that clamps down hard on civil liberties and jails dissidents. Laws so vague and broad that everyone has broken them. So then the state can pick and choose who to punish for breaking those laws. And everyone lives in fear of them. But one crucial difference between the Labour Party and the Chinese Communist Party is that China does all this surveillance and monitoring and policing of its people to enhance patriotism and national unity. Whereas Keir is trying to destroy patriotism and national unity. Now, Labour are slumping in the polls. Do you think this has played out badly for, for Keir? Um, I, I don't know if it's played I mean, I suppose it's early days with them being in government and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, people got Labour in for a reason. So, and polls fluctuates. I don't think it was this reason, though. No, 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 I, I, <laughs> I think, I think the reason they got, they got Labour in was because they're not the Tories. Yeah. And I think we've had a week, we've had about a month of Labour and now we're like, could we have the Tories back, please? What's, well, the, I, what's I, the difference between the two? Well, I think, I think the Tories... The Tories, uh, the Tories at least pretend chaos. they're doing something. The Tories have, have this chaos, but at, at a slower pace. At a slower <laughs> pace, I agree. And they pretend. They yeah. say, oh, we're doing something about immigration, and they're not. Whereas Labour just, like, matter of fact, like, yeah, we're going to just, you know, we're going to give all the housing to the immigrants and put them before British people who have paid into the system. Well, then is that honest? You know what? At least Labour are transparent. They're honest. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Labour have actually, have actually said have, that, but that's, that's certainly a perception that a lot of people no, have. A lot of people have. I think it was Angela Rayner who has said, I get confused with them, is it, or it's one of the women, and they've said that they're going to rehouse a lot of the migrants and they're going to put them before uh, British people. And the they've got Operation list. Scatter, so they're going to spread yes, them across, of, across yeah, the country yeah. to you know, make sure honest. every borough. At least they were saying, look, we're going to... F you, you know, so yeah. <laughs> we're going mean, to screw, they're, they're, screw you. Okay? They're ideologically committed <laughs> to, to open borders, whereas the Tories just wanted open borders so their businesses could have yeah. uh, cheap labour and, you know, fixed asset prices would, would rise, property no, but, prices but that, would rise. That, that's the whole thing. I was speaking about it at lunch today with friends and they didn't understand. So I know a lot of gay men, there's a surprise, that <laughs> all vote Tory and they're like, but how can they because of, you know, Section 28 and stuff? I said, because they're, they're all business owners. Yeah. So they all think about that. That's why they don't have any truck with it. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, well, Tories like to look after themselves. Yeah, they do.